Hello again, Adam here for the next lesson. Uh, today's lesson we're going to go over mounting and installation of your gearbox. So we're going to show you how to mount it on the shaft, check your torque arm, properly tighten down your taper grip bushing or your shrink disc, whatever the case may be, and we'll cover all the aspects of the install itself. We're on the shop now. We'll go ahead and get started with our installation of our different uh, Mounting configurations, mounting options. Uh, the first thing we're going to start with is our easy grip. So we have our easy grip reducer here. Uh, this is obviously just a demo. This is just the reducer portion. The motor would be sitting here. Just to go over our components here, we'll slide this out of the way. We have our shrink disc itself, two plates with all the hardware, make sure they're all loose. You have your, your inner support bushing with the lock and collar built into it, and you also have your outer support bushing. So well, to get started here, we'll prep the unit first. So we'll take the unit on the bench here, just a regular rag, clean the surface where the shrink disc will be sitting, which is the outer larger extension of the two. You can see there's two extensions. We'll take the uh, larger one is for the shrink disc. We'll make sure that's good and clean. We'll do the same on the back, on the outside, as well as the inside. The bore, as well as the shaft, needs to be clean and dry for this application to work. So we'll go through and make sure that's good and clean. All right, so we know we're good and clean, we can start the assembly over here. So first up, we'll take our inner support bushing, and we will slide, just slide it right in here, all the way in, it fits flush. That's all we have to do for the rear. Now for the front, uh, for this demonstration, we will not have a safety guard on it, but the first step would be to mount the rear safety guard plate. Uh, that attaches with the two Phillips head screws that it comes with, but we won't have the guard on here just so you can see how it goes together. We'll go ahead and grab the shrink disc itself and just slide that over the bore. Just sit it all the way up against there. <clears throat> now we can go ahead and put it on the shaft. So we'll come around here, flip it around, and we'll slide it onto the shaft. All right, so once it's slid onto the shaft, you want to tighten down this rear collar. So we'll grab the right Allen wrench, tighten that down. You're going to tighten that down to the torque spec that's in the manual per the size. So we'll just get it tight, hand tight for now, but we'll make sure we come back and tighten that with the torque wrench. But that's the rear collar, and now we can move on to the outside. So now it's staying on the shaft. We, the rear is all the way up against the, the shoulder on the back side, and we go ahead and put our outer support bushing on. Now this might take a little doing, you may have to wiggle the unit a little bit, but you're going to mount it on the bore. As you're wiggling the unit, push it all the way in until it stops. It'll stop up against the bore, the hollow bore of the reducer, and the, your bushings are all the way in there. So from a positioning standpoint, the reducer is positioned. Now you take your shrink disc, slide it out just a little bit, and you want to center it on the extension there. You want a dead center. So then the next step would be you take your your socket and go all around in a circular pattern until they're all hand tight. Then once they're hand tight, you check your own end manual for the size of easy grip that you have and tighten it down to that spec. Now tighten it down in three steps to that. So if the step, if the spec is 50 foot pounds or 50 inch pounds, whatever the case may be, start at 10, go to 20 or 30, then go up to 50. So take steps to get there. That ensures proper clamping around the entire box. Now, this one specifically is in a circular pattern. You don't do a cross pattern. There's so many screws, you need to do a circular pattern to keep the clamping nice and even. So do a circular pattern on this. On our other uh, taper grip bushing, which we'll go over here shortly, that you do a star pattern, but this is a circular pattern. So once that circular pattern is tight, you've got your final torque, the reducer is fully installed. Now the advantage of the easy grip, if you ever wanted to change your shaft, all you'd have to change is these two bushings. You don't have to change the entire reducer, you're just changing the inner and outer support bushing to match your uh, new driven shaft. Um, it allows that extra flexibility for different applications. Okay, next we'll go on to a keyed hollow bore hyponic. All right, so next up we're going to do a hyponic with a keyed hollow bore. So this is our hyponic product here we have hanging, ready to go onto our shaft here. Keyed hollow bore, this is common for all keyed hollow bore products, but we'll just show on the hyponic here. Just to show our torque arm, this is a T-type style torque arm for the hyponic. 
It comes with the hardware to bolt it to the reducer, however which orientation you wanted it. So make sure these are nice and tight before you go to mount it on, lock washers and everything. Uh, for this, we're having the torque arm on the back, picking up the, the conveyor, if you will, uh, mounting bracket on this side. The hardware that comes with that is two rubber bushings and a, two flat washers. The bolt length is dependent on how thick the material you're bolting to, so uh, we give some recommendations in our O&M for diameter of the bolt, what it should be, but this length will depend on what you're bolting it to. So we'll go ahead and get this mounted. The first step, as, as with these, as with all of them, is to make sure the bores are good and clean and the shafts are good and clean. So, so we'll wipe them real, down real good where the key goes, down in the keyway. The shaft itself, make, wipe that real good. We'll grab the unit. Wipe best we can there. Any dirt, debris, uh, shipping lubricant, because we coat these shafts to prevent them from rusting. So keep that good and clean. All right, so they're nice and clean. Uh, if you can, get the keyway at an uh, easily accessible slot so you can put the new key in. Now for this, we won't be putting a key in because that's depending on your pulley shaft, the length and all that. But the first step would be to put the key onto the shaft you line it up onto the bore. So once we're lined up, you, you can rotate this. You can reach in here and turn the fan to turn the uh, low-speed shaft to whichever. You don't necessarily have to turn it. You can turn this to make it match the bore. So, so once we're, everything's clean and dry, we know we have the right key that came with the, the pulley or the shaft, and then we can line it up. So we'll go ahead and drop it down and get it on that shaft. We get it as close as we can uh, with the crane or with, these aren't that heavy, but for ease of the video, we're, we're doing the, the crane. Um, but once we get it close there, you line up, line up your keyway in your bore to the keyway and the key stock that's in the shaft, and you're going to slide it all the way on there. Now, the, the, there is a little bit of a trick. You kind of have to wobble it on to get it to walk all the way down. If you have to, lift it up a little while you're pushing in. So you, you rock it back and forth, you slide it in, get it as far in as it'll go up against the collar in the back, up against the uh, shaft collar. And then next is for the torque arm hardware. And then now the point here with these torque arms is to make sure when you tighten them down, these rubber bushings aren't too tight. If, uh, if they're too tight, they're going to bind up the low speed bearings. This goes for all shaft mounted products. So if they're too tight, it'll bind up the bearings. It'll cause leaks, it'll cause bearing, cause bearing failures, et cetera. So you don't want to go too tight with these, but you want to isolate any metal-to-metal -metal contact and you want to isolate any movement from the run out of the shaft. You want it to move. So if it's too tight and can't move is when that damage is going to occur. So the way you mount these, okay, so you take your bolt with the washer and a rubber bushing, put it through the reducer side, grab the other rubber bushing, put it on the back side of the torque arm, Put the bolt through the piece of equipment, put the other flat washer, and then lock it down with the nut. Now once that's tight, this is where you don't want to go too tight. The rule of thumb is you want to be able to move one of these three, two bushings with your hand. If, one of them, if, all, if both of them are way too tight and you can't spin them, it's way too tight. It doesn't need to be that tight. So you back it down. So as long as it has enough looseness in that bolt, to float with the run out of the shaft, then it's correctly tightened. So that's the keyed hollow bore uh, mounting, in particular with the hyponic, but any keyed hollow bore reducer. All right, so next up we'll do our taper grip bushing. So this is our standard shaft locking device for the BBB product, as well as our HBB product. Uh, this one shown here is a BBB. Uh, we're gonna go through the process of mounting it. So the first step we wanna do is, you know, get it on the table here. We got our torque arm mounted. Uh, we'll, we'll show you that here in a second, but torque arms mounted on the back, but we mainly want to focus on the bushing itself. So the first thing, we ship them with the bushing installed like this. So what you want to do, you want to unscrew the bushing from the bore, completely out. And you can see it, so you have the bushing itself, you have the thrust collar, and make sure you have all six of the bolts for the, uh, the hardware there. Uh, first step you want to do before you go to put it in is grab some standard anti-seize. Just a little bit on the first couple threads. That's about all you need right there. Just on the first couple threads so that when you thread it all the way down, it spreads it along. This will keep it from, uh, come from fretting corrosion in there and make it easier to remove later on down the road. So once that's on there, you go bring it back over. You're going to thread it back in all the way. 
and we'll back it off about a half a turn. Uh, we're going to use a feeler gauge to set a gap between the back of the flange and the front of the thrust collar. And what you want to do is you want to get a one to two millimeter gap. You can use feeler gauges, any, anything you have. These feeler gauges are perfect. You just need a little bit of a gap between those two surfaces and you just adjust it there. Now you're going to check it again when you go to mount it on the shaft, but I like doing it first before because it does tend to move. So now we're ready to move it onto the shaft. Now as with, same as with all the other shafts, we want to make sure the shaft is clean and dry. So clean that off real good. And also make sure inside the taper grip bushing itself is clean. We don't want any of that anti-seize dripping down into the bore. So we want to make sure that's good, clean and dry, and then we're ready to go. So we'll go ahead and mount this over to the shaft. Okay, once you get it close, you make sure where your bushing is, you make sure where the gap is, and then from there you're going to work it on so it completely, completely goes onto the shaft. Okay, so we're all the way on. Now, for demonstration purposes, this shaft is not long enough. Um, if you can see here where the shaft ends, it's not enough engagement for this to transmit the proper torque. So, but this is strictly for uh, demonstration. So uh, ideally, you'd want that to be extending past the bushing, or rule of thumb is as long as it clears the split in the bushing. We do have a TT dimension for that in our catalog, so you can reference that as well. So once it's mounted on there, you can let the weight down a little closer. So you want to get this, now we've got to put the torque arm hardware in. So as with the keyed hollow bore and all shaft mount, you want to make sure these rubber bushings are not over tightened. So we'll put them in the same method. We do the bolt, flat washer, bushing through the top and underneath the metal framing or the uh, Underneath the torque arm itself, you're going to put another rubber bushing. So now that the torque arm from the reducer is completely rubber isolated from metal. So now we're through. And on the bottom, you do one more flat washer and the nut. Now with these, same as with the previous one, one of them you should be able to turn by hand. If you can't turn any of them by hand, they're too tight, so you want to back it off a little bit. So now that we can turn by hand, that's good and tight. Uh, one thing you want to look for when you do this type of torque arm is when you're looking down back here, you want to make sure there's no metal metal contact between the conveyor itself and the gearbox in its rotation. So naturally with the run out of the shaft, this gearbox is going to want to float. And with that float, it may come in contact or may come close to the equipment. So you want to make sure it's far enough away from the equipment to not cause any damage. That impact would not only damage the equipment, but also damage the low speed bearings because it's not allowed to float with the run out. So just make sure there's no metal to metal contact, there's clearance all the way around the motor as well, not just here, but also the motor. Okay, so once the torque arm bolt is tight, you have your, um, the one bushing you can turn, you know it's good and tight. Now you can come over and tighten the bushing itself. So first you wanna recheck that gap. Again, it's behind the flange in front of the thrust collar. So you check that gap, make sure you have that nice gap so you're good there. Now you can come through in a star pattern, tighten your bolts. So they get them nice and hand tight, and then then you grab your torque wrench. So with your torque wrench, again, you work your way towards the final torque. If it's 80 foot-pounds, you do one at 20, one at 40, one at 80. Just three, break it down into three steps. That makes sure it clamps properly. So you go around and set your torque. Once they're all torqued, it is now torqued down and ready to go. All right, next up is the shrink disc unit. So this is a BBB-5 unit. Uh, here's the standard shrink disc, which you've seen in the easy grip portion of this. So the shrink disc itself is the same, it's just the unit is different. There's no inner and outer bushing. The inner the diameter of the bore is set to the diameter of the driven equipment. So that's where your tolerance comes in. You gotta get a good shaft fit, as we mentioned in a previous video. So uh, we wanna make sure everything is clean and dry here as well. So the first step, we'll take our rag, wipe off, wipe off the exposed shaft, make sure there's no grease, no anti-seize, no none of that. It's all supposed to be completely clean, as well as inside the bore of the unit, outside where the shrink disc goes, both sides, keep that nice and clean. So we're good there. Now we can lift the unit onto the shaft and slide it all the way up and align our torque arm mounting point. 
So the torque arm on this unit is our banjo style torque arm, very similar to the T-Type, but it mounts on the back side or either side depending on the reducer. But BV5, it mounts on the back side uh, with, with the mounting bolts around the outside here. So we'll go ahead and lift this up and move it over there. Okay. All right, so it's slid on there. Now again, as with the taper grip bushing, uh, this shaft is a little bit short. So uh, you can see in here, it's, it's about halfway through. This setup right here would not transmit any torque, but for demonstration purposes, we wanted to keep it small. So uh, normally, uh, these shrink this units, the, shafts have, the shaft has to come to the end of the exposed bore of the shrink this bore. So it has to come or come to the edge or protrude from the edge. So keep that in mind when you're doing a shrink this install. So once that's on there, now you grab your shrink disc, you come over here, just slide it right on the exposed board. Now you're going to want to center it uh, on that exposed distance. So once it's centered, and you know you have your shaft there, as I said, this isn't long enough, but assuming this is long enough, you're going to come around here, you're going to tighten these all the way down uh, till they're flush in a circular pattern. Do not do a star pattern, you're going to do a circular pattern for these. So once they're tightened down all the way around, you're going to get, take three steps to go to your final torque. And then from there, that is now tightened down and ready to transmit torque as far as the shrink disc. But we still have to do the, the torque arm itself. So same hardware as with the others. Or rubber bushing touching the torque arm. Another rubber bushing on the opposite side of the torque arm. Slide it through, flat washer. And then in the, on the opposite side of the equipment. And then tighten it down, you should be able to move one of the two rubber bushings just by hand, not, not with too much force. So once that's tight and secured, we can remove the weight from it. And now we know our shrink disc is tight. We can go back and do our pre and post install inspection and fire up the unit and you're ready to go. So that concludes our install portion of this. Okay, that'll be it for today's lesson. Uh, if you have any questions in the meantime before the next lesson, uh, go to sumitomodrive.com and or contact your local Sumitomo rep.